Hello and welcome. Deload here. This is Big Ambitions, and this is the point for early access release. If you don't know what Big Ambitions is, it is a business simulator, business management simulator, more specifically. I uh, have played it in the past myself. I really enjoyed it. I got pretty far in it, but I kind of hit a wall. Um, so I've waited a couple versions now, and they've released quite a bit of content. In fact, they released point four. it looks like, today. Uh, it's day being the 13th of December, 2023. And uh, they added a, a new business, the electronics store, which I thought seemed pretty interesting. And uh, they added a lot of optimization, and they added some more uh, bug fixes and whatnot. I felt it was uh, worth checking out. Um, I don't know if any of you have played Big Ambitions yet. It's definitely worth it if you enjoy business simulator games. But uh, you could do pretty much anything from running a you know small fast food chain, or even just a single location, really. Um, you could even do a, a grocery store, a uh, web design firm, be a lawyer. You can own a uh, dance club, a liquor store, all sorts of different things, clothing store, it's just a bunch of different things that you can make out, you know, in your business empire. Um, it's really fun, but uh, I'm on hard mode currently, and uh, obviously we have just finished creating the character. Now, the character creation screen, in my opinion, is very minimalistic. I think they're actually doing a good job in focusing on the actual gameplay versus you know the little the little things i would say is what character creation is but you know they're not focused so much on a ton of options currently on the character creator i think again their focus is the actual gameplay which is smart you know start with the big the meat the things that actually matter so let's get this game started and uh yeah let's let's go It's been three months since Grandma died. I know that I'm an adult now, but I'm still 18 years old. Still, it feels so scary that no one is there to take care of stuff. There's one good thing, though. At the funeral, my Uncle Fred asked me for my phone number. He said he wanted to help me get on my feet. I don't really know him, but I guess he's family after all. All right, here we go. Hey kid, I hope you're feeling better. Anyway, I talked with a friend of mine, Richard. He owns a bunch of buildings in Hell's Kitchen, and he's kind of a big shot. Well, the bottom line is uh, he has a cheap apartment that uh, you could probably afford. It's not much, but it'll do. Right on. So yeah, um, I don't know if, you know, anyone knows or not, but this is New York City. We are in Hell's Kitchen currently. And it looks like they've decorated quite a bit for Christmas. Don't see any snow, but I don't know if New York has snow currently or not. So there's that. But look, here is the apartment that we can rent. Now I'm moving around with the WASD keys turning with the keyboard or with the mouse excuse me pretty simple controls pretty straightforward you could just click to enter the building or you can obviously hit that enter building button um looks like they want me to rent the building 44 dollars a day looks like i have to put down 1300 and pay for the electrical appliance it's not too bad we'll get that rented out and then we can close Oh, now I need to sleep for full energy. Gotta go back in. <laughs> All right, let's... Look how bare this apartment is when you get in here. We get full customization of every space that we own, which I really like. Um, there's a lot of different things that you could do with any, any building that you end up purchasing or renting. So, lots of customization there, which is really neat. It gives you a little bit of a, your own flair so to speak. 
All right, you can see up here at the top left, our energy is very low. Our food is full for the most part, and we're 100% happy. We got $2,793 currently. It is Monday at 8.14 p.m. or 2014. Um, it's our first day, and we are at 45 Third Street. All right, let us sleep. Let's just do... Let's do eight hours, roughly eight hours. Nice little fast forward through that. Made no profit, obviously. Full energy, now we need to eat. And uh, I also transferred a couple of bucks to your bank account because uh, I wanna make sure you get something to eat, okay? Promise me. Now, I don't recall personally how much you get per difficulty level, but Starting off with the hard difficulty, I believe he gave you $4,000, if I'm not mistaken. So, just a little bit of money. I mean, $4,000 to me would be, you know, a pretty generous chunk of change. But, you know, I guess for gameplay purposes, it's just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you could eventually get to the point where you're making millions of dollars a day. And it gets pretty pretty easy. This is why I hit a wall before with this game, but no, it looks like we're currently closed. It's 4.30 a.m. What time do they open? 9 a.m.? Let's just sit on this bench. Oh, okay. Can only rest for four hours. Gotta wait another half hour, but we might as well just tick this thing down. And they'll be open at that point. It's nice that you could see what time you're going to be leaving your rest in. All right, let us grab, let's grab a handcart. Whenever you want to shop in a store, you know, like appliance store, office supply store, etc., always grab a handcart. Very nifty. Um, in this case, they want me to buy a standard fridge. We can just click here, place order, and it'll let us buy. Now we can run, we can take the handcart with us. And in fact, there's a little trick that you can do once you get a vehicle and you can put your handcart in your trunk just so you could have a handcart pretty much at all times. Um, there's even a bigger cart that you can use that holds eight items. The handcart that I'm using right now only holds four, but the bigger one you can get at the um, furniture store. That one holds eight. Now I can park the vehicle, take the vehicle. In this case, I am going to park it, manage storage, click on the fridge, and now it's in my hands. And now I can hit R, the R key, place it. And you can hit R again to rotate things. I'm just going to put it right here. Pretty simple. Got to leave the apartment again. I'm just going to leave the handcart. I don't need it to go grocery shopping. In fact, when you go grocery shopping, you don't get a, like, you don't use a handcart. There's actually little baskets they give you. And, uh, after you make your purchase, you, you just get a bag. And you can keep that bag, again, in your trunk. Food doesn't spoil. Um. You could just keep walking with it if you want to. It's your, your discretion on that one. They want me to buy three units of fresh food, so... I can see here what is inside this here. It's $8 per fresh food. We'll just click here. Oh yeah, I forgot. Duh, gotta grab a basket. So you gotta grab a basket to buy things. So buy one, two, three. So three clicks get you three things of fresh food. Click on the cashier and place that order and leave. Now see, you can see the little bag there. I really like this environment that they've created. I mean, it's, it's kind of it's a it's kind of like this bright vibe to it, a little bit of a cartoon. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, like the the art, I guess style. I don't know how how exactly to say. It. I just get vibes from uh, Rise of Industry. It's got this just like nice disposition. It's a it's a a nice look to it. All right, so now I could just place the fresh food in there. Now, I know it wants me to eat food, too, and I could have eaten it in my hand, but when it's in the fridge, you can just click once. Boom. 
You eat your food. Now right, let's see what Fred has to say. Uncle Fred. Hey, kid. I've gone ahead and paid your first rent, but that's it, okay? You need to get out there and get a job. Anything at all. You just need a salary right now. All right. Well, in that case, let's go find a job. They're telling us to go to the local supermarket. So that's what we'll do. Right back to the El Gato food market. The cat. Oh, I have $969. Nice. Now, thankfully, this job is going to be relatively quick. We will not be doing this for a good chunk of time at all. This is just like an intermediary so you can get some cash. Wow, they've really changed how customers work. Usually, when I, when I played the game prior, um, when you walked into a store, there were no customers at all. The customers would come in after the fact. So it was advantageous for you to basically not work inside your stores that you own. But now it seems they have most certainly fixed that. It is much, much more obvious that customers are entering and leaving your business and making purchases and whatnot while you're not inside or while you're inside. So it's pretty nice. Now, one thing you'll probably notice here is this is a cashier job at a grocery store. I, I get it's New York City. I get it. I get it. But $25 an hour. Now, I don't know how many of you out there make $25 an hour. Very likely a lot of you make more. Very likely a lot of you make less. Can you imagine finding a job that actually pays a somewhat living wage doing cashier work at a grocery store? Now, it is New York City. One of the most expensive cities in the world. So this probably isn't a living wage in New York City. I really, I personally do not know. In my area... Um, I live in a very, very small town. I'm actually in a rural town. Um, this would be more than enough for a person to live off of here in, in my tiny little town. Anyway, we're going to accept the job. Starts tomorrow at 8 o'clock. So today I get a day off. whoopity doo da, Yay. Um, frankly speaking, not really much for me to to do at the exact moment. So I'm just going to run right back down to my apartment and go to sleep, essentially, for quite some time. It looks like 20 hours, 22 hours. You know, I got to get my beauty sleep, so that'll bring us into the next day. So we'll we'll actually get up at. Just so we know we're making it on time. We'll get up at 7.15. We lost profit. We're paying our daily rent. Alright. Oh. Better eat food. There we go. Alright, we're ready for our day of work in our tie-dye shirt and jeans and sneakers. Looked like Converse All-Stars, to be honest. And it's... This is kind of like a preview of what you can do inside your own businesses. Um, which is generally... The, uh, the cashier position. There's really no other... There is the cleaning position. There is uh, security positions as well. I have no idea if you can be your own security guard. I truly do not know. But uh, I know you can be a cashier. I know you can do cleaning and whatnot. Um, beyond that, I, yeah, I really don't know if you can, can be a uh, security guard. Anyway, I can actually start working now. So I might as well. I'm going to click the fast forward time because it does get kind of monotonous if you're sitting here, you know, waiting for this forever. So we'll just do that. Uh, bear in mind, I, in my settings, have the time slowed down. I really felt like that the default time is way too fast for my style of gameplay. I prefer this slightly slower pace. Um, I am not going to make you guys sit here and watch me do this. So. I'll leave it here and fast forward 
till the next step in our objectives. All right. As you can see now, I have earned the amount required. Got a job. Well done. You're a chip off the old block, just like your dad. I think he was probably just about your age when he started his first business. Look, if you need a loan to start something, I got a friend over at uh, Jensen Capital. His name is Larry, okay? That's who you ask for. And be sure to say hi from me, your Uncle Fred, okay? All right, so <clears throat> our next step is to take out a loan of $15,000. Then we need to find and rent a retail building of a maximum of 75 meters square in the garment district using Vugle maps. Then we're gonna start a gift shop and then we're just gonna quit our job at the supermarket. So like I said, this this job at the supermarket is, is not long at all. In fact, that was just two days. So um, I believe, let's see, it's, it's 4.11 right now, 4.12. Hmm. Let's see if we can get to Jensen. Oh, it's right there. Perfect. So we're going to see if we can get to Jensen Capital real quick. Um, get that $15,000 loan. And get started making our business. Look at that. They are open. Let's get a new loan. $15,000. $62 payment per day with 17 in interest, so it makes 79. All right, that's fine. Perfect. No credit check required. <laughs> Just name drop Uncle Fred and you get 15 grand. If only it was that easy. All right, let's open up Google Maps down here on the right. This is our phone screen here. Um, you get the account of view which just shows, you know, what's going on in your, your bank accounts or your bank account, I should say. You also have investments, which we'll cover later. And it shows your daily profit, I think for the last three days total. And then your income statement here. Pretty straightforward. Um, it becomes a, a pretty useful tool later on versus right now. It's not terribly useful. Bizman uh, obviously shows nothing at the moment because we have zero businesses, but this is where you'll see all your businesses um, your warehouses, your HQ. Right now, the only thing that's on here is our private residence. So, employees tab, pretty straightforward. Once you start making, you know, businesses and opening up with employees and whatnot, they'll list here. Same with contacts. The more contacts you get, they'll start listing up here. Like Jensen Capital, now I can just call them. They're open until six every day, uh, eight to six, I should say. Actually, I don't think it is every day. I think there's some days they they are closed, but. Um, you can call them now because I've met them. I've talked to them. I can just give them a call, say I want a new loan or something like that. I'm going to cancel it out right now, but it's nice to have that because there will be several other businesses, especially when it comes to hiring employees where you can call them and, and, and get new employees. Anyway, we're going to close this part out. We're going to go to Google Maps and we're going to look for a retail space here. And we can even scroll down. And select the neighborhood garment district because that's what we're focusing on. Now we need to find a 75 meter square building in the garment district. We want it to have good exposure too. So like you can see on here, the traffic exposure, it does it. I've never seen what the actual numbers are supposed to mean in terms of like, is this 40 for the day, 40 per hour, 40 per minute? It doesn't say. I just imagined it's it's a traffic of 40 per hour. Um, let's see. Yeah, it still didn't say on here. It might, and this is my ignorance right now, it might tell us, you know, once we actually rent the building, but we're not going to do it just yet. 40 traffic, it's pretty decent. I mean, we're only allowed a capacity of 15 per hour. This is why I think it's 40 per hour. But, uh... We'll check and see these other buildings here. So this one is 42 with 15, 35, but you get a capacity of 30. Now, in this case, this is too big. This is 225 meters square. This is too big to uh, complete the objective, I should say. But I think these ones here might be pretty decent. Is this one 75? Yeah. Uh, you also want to look at, you know, your daily rent. So let's open in Bizman. 
Daily rent's eighteen dollars. We had to put down a five hundred thirty-eight dollar deposit. One hundred twenty dollars in electrical appliances, so that's six hundred fifty-eight dollars. Just dropping that down. We got plenty of money here, obviously. But uh, we'll we'll go back here real quick. See this one? It's a little cheaper. But obviously, look at the traffic. You get fifteen traffic with fifteen capacity. Now, this doesn't mean you're guaranteed fifteen per hour. It really also depends on the business. There's demand in every district. So right now, um, I think I'm trying to remember how to see demand. Let's close Google Maps. Let's pause. I hit the space bar to pause. Um, where do you see Market Insider? So right now we are in the garment district selected here. There's Hell's Kitchen, Murray Hill, and Midtown. In the garment district, the demand for cheap gifts, there's only one business selling cheap gifts, so the demand is 100%. Now, I believe this is the case for the sake of the, the mission or the objective, I should say. Um, Because expensive gifts, again, one business, 86% demand. Now, you'll also see here import price index. This has to do with importing goods from overseas. And uh, I know we'll learn more about it. I think this has slightly changed since I last play, played, excuse me. So I'm not entirely sure what that means in terms of is, is the price index to import 1.3 times the normal amount or, I mean, I really don't know. That's what I'm going to assume. But uh, again, we're, we're going to have one business competing with us, which is good. I mean, there's always going to be a business for, you know, something so having one is really really good all right let's go back to google maps let's find that 75 meter 4215 still in the garment district i think this is probably the best bet it's probably going to be the most expensive daily rent that's okay again we have sixteen thousand to play with at the moment we we will be definitely making more than enough eventually so we're going to rent this building this is number six fifth avenue now we can start a new business. We're going to start a uh, gift shop. Um, let's enter the name. Let's call it Deloads Gifts. We'll start that business. Pretty simple. I'm just going to keep everything standard on uh, the logos and whatnot for now. We'll customize them later. Um, but for now, we'll just we'll keep everything standard. So as you can see right now, our traffic index is only 42%. It says traffic index shows you how much foot traffic passes by your business. More traffic equals more potential customers. This index is based on location and cannot be improved. Marketing indicates how much you are advertising your business to potential customers. This can be improved by running marketing campaigns. Now, customer satisfaction is a variable of four different things here. Right now, it's a 50% because, well, one, the business isn't even open, and two, we have no employees to provide any customer satisfaction. Um, but right now, customer service, pricing, the interior, and cleanliness are all factors in bringing in a higher customer satisfaction. And the higher the customer satisfaction, the better your business is going to do overall. Um, starting off, it'll, it'll be like this. And now, you'll probably start off running the business entirely by yourself. But eventually, you will hire employees, and the employees will make a massive impact on how well your customers perceive their service and uh, the cleanliness of the business. The pricing and interior are completely controlled by you. Now, the interior, obviously, in this case, means like, you know, decorating, painting the walls, you know, doing the floor, stuff like that. And then again, the pricing is obviously determined by you and how you set the prices of each individual item. You can get away with raising the prices above your competitors if you really want to, but that's generally not a good idea simply because your competitors were obviously, uh, will obviously, excuse me, be, you know, gaining more business because you're pushing your customers away with the higher prices. So you have to kind of negotiate how much are you purchasing your items for versus how much are you selling them for? And that's where the pricing factor comes in as well. Um, it's very, very important that you make sure that your pricing is not, too much for your, especially your, your, your area being in the garment district. It's, I don't want to say it's a poor area, 
but it is the poorest area in the game. Um, and I think it's Murray Hill. No, not Murray Hill. Uh, Midtown. Midtown is the most expensive. You can get away with a lot of, of price raising there. So, um, let's move on. Let's close this here. Close Google Maps. The next step for me is to quit my job at the supermarket. Oh, I could just. There we go. Don't even. Don't even need to walk in and give them the satisfaction of seeing my face. So you're a gift shop owner now, huh? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Now we got some shopping to do. We'll get you some furniture and uh, some really nice products to sell in there. And uh, I also wanted to mention I uh, recently invested in a car dealership, and we found kind of an old wreck of a car in the workshop in the back, but it still runs. It's not much. But it's yours if you want it. The keys in the glove compartment. All right. Well, we're getting a free car from our Uncle Fred here. Very generous man. Um, I I don't think it's very often that someone has an uncle that is just willing to help them out as much as Fred has so far. But uh, don't worry. We will be safe, self-made people eventually. Bearing in mind, we are the ones that took out the loan against ourselves, so. Ah, you found the car. Good. Now, don't get any parking tickets. As I said earlier, it's time to pick up some stuff for your new store. You're going to use your new car. Or continue running around with the hand trucks. It's up to you. All right, we're going to follow traffic laws currently because I don't want to get hit. Let us park here. Because remember, I kept that hand truck inside the apartment. Oops. Park vehicle. Oh, these little Christmas candy canes are kind of annoying. Oh, no, it disappeared. Well. I guess I need to pick another one up. That's strange. This uh, Hansa Mimic, wink wink, does not have very good handling. All right, no parking spots nearby, so. We'll just park right here all right let's get out the vehicle and make some purchases hopefully the uh appliance store is still open they are perfect they're open until seven we've got to remember to keep that hand truck all right so what do we need we need a cabinet a cash register a stack of shopping baskets and a rounded shelf all right so let's get the cash register no, I don't need two of them. Just need one. Cabinet. Shopping baskets. And a rounded shelf. We'll go here and place our order. $2,700 for all that. Not horrible. You know, for carrying all the stuff, he sure as hell runs fast. Alright, we'll manage storage. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Now, what I did there is I clicked one more time onto the car, and it let me put that in there. So, the hand truck, that is. So, now we'll head back to the gift store. I'm hitting all the green lights. This is pretty lucky. It feels like they changed the handling a little bit. It feels a little bit more smooth. Before it was a little uh, wild driving around. You can, by the way, use controllers if you want to. I used to do that. I kind of stopped just because it was kind of silly to pick up a controller just to drive. But driving is a little bit easier when you do that. Not going to lie. Especially because you can control the speed pretty easily and 
It just looks, it looks nicer. It literally just looks nicer. Anyway, we're going to park this vehicle, manage our storage again from the car, pick up the hand truck. Oops. Take up the hand truck and then cash register, cabinet, shopping basket, rounded shelf. Perfect. We're going to enter the building. We're going to park this vehicle here. And let's take out the cabinet with drawers. Now, where do we want to put this? I'm thinking it probably makes, makes the most sense to just be near the stock room. So we'll just place that right there. Nothing is, it does not have to be perfect. It really doesn't. Just to what looks nice to you. Right now, we're just going to keep it basic. We're going to keep that there, paper bags. Let's place a rounded shelf. We want to leave space for both sides. You don't want to do something like this because then only one side can be accessed when you are actually stocking both sides. So always keep a gap for these. And you'll see the little arrows. You can see them on, on the ground there. That's your, basically the position a customer can grab something from. We're just going to place it right here. Pretty easy. We'll put cheap gifts. So notice here, I chose cheap gifts, even though I don't have any right now. It, it took away the, the, uh, alert of needing to sell something. Um, let's place these. You typically want to put these by the door. Simply because your customers are going to walk right in and pick up a basket. Oh, very, very nice. Starting to look like a real store now. Next, we have to buy some things for you to sell. And for the time being, you have to go to a wholesale store. But eventually, down the road, you'll do a whole lot better by importing directly from the manufacturer overseas. Yep. So basically, right now, my only access to goods is at the wholesale store, like he just mentioned. The thing with the wholesale store is that you are paying much more than you would be paying when you import. That's where I think the import price index comes into play. But uh, at the wholesale store, everything's at a premium, comparatively speaking. I'm just going to break the law in front of that guy, you know, whatever. But uh, it's where you have to start. And it'll... It'll be temporary. I think by the time you open your second business, if I am remembering correctly, which I very likely, excuse me, I'm not. By the time you open that second business, I believe you'll have access to importing. But um, for now, we're going to stick with wholesale. We're going to go to the place that it's telling us to right now, though typically I'd rather go to this place, the New, New York Distro. But again, we're going to go with the place that's selling us right now. And I believe you can also set up orders from these wholesalers. Um, so they'll deliver once per day so you can keep stock. So you don't have to keep going back and forth. You may have to eventually just because maybe you miscalculated or, you know, something happened. Or maybe you sold so much you didn't realize you're going to sell that much. Stuff like that can happen. Um, then you will have to travel to the wholesaler, but... Once you start, you know, importing and whatnot, you'll be good. You'll know what your business needs, so. All right, we are buying cheap gifts. Let's see, burgers, salads, fresh food, frozen food, classic cheap mail clothing, cheap gift. Let's buy, so they're $2,034.89 each box. Let's buy 400 cheap gifts. Oh, we need paper bags too. Oopsie. All right, let's buy some paper bags. One, two. So now we have 2,000 paper bags, 400 cheap gifts. Let's place our order. So $4,500 to buy these goods. So essentially speaking, we need to make back that money and then some to obviously make a profit. That should not be difficult, given we only have one competitor. Were they seriously right next to us, and I drove all the way around? <laughs> Oops. Oopsie. All right. Well, <laughs> let's grab this stuff. <laughs> you can tell I clearly paid attention to what's going on there. 
<laughs> All right, let's let's get this stuff in here. Um, wow, I, I I still can't believe I did that. Let's park this vehicle, grab the the paper bags. Boom. So I I grabbed the bags from the the hand truck and just clicked on there. No, we're not we're not gonna work right now. That's silly. Cheap gifts. Boom. Now they're all placed on there. I believe that's the maximum I can hold. Yeah, 200 of 200. Great work, kiddo. Now it's time to open up and start handling some cash, making some money. I'm crossing my fingers. Alrighty. So let us... First off, we're going to open Abyssman. We're going to go to the schedule. Now our opening hours are... 8 to 4. That's, that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to stretch this to five just for now. Um, that way we get a good nine hours. We get a, a, a decent idea of what traffic might be in the middle of the day. You know, some, there's some businesses that'll make more sense to be open. You know, there are 24 hour businesses. There's businesses that would be more profitable between 11 and eight instead of eight and, and five. I don't think there is functionally a mechanic in the game where like, okay, the majority of the people in the city are, you know, between eight and five, they're, they're working at their own jobs. It's, it's harder for them to shop, but I think there is a mechanic in the game that dictates per business type in this case, you know, gifts it dictates how much traffic you could potentially get based upon the traffic volume that your particular location can get up to so i'm again i'm going to stick with eight to five right now we're going to see how that works out and we will open the business now we're closed currently obviously because our hours are closed i think what i'll do here real quick is just do some cheap interior design because people are most certainly going to complain about it. I already know they will. I am kind of admittedly jumping the gun a little bit. But I think it's just worth getting it taken care of. We'll do just some... Hmm. We'll do this. It's basic. It's bland. But it'll be at least something cost twenty six hundred dollars and it's gonna be more money we're gonna need to make back but thankfully we still have five grand we could literally buy everything we just bought again if we needed to for the cheap gifts and whatnot so let's head back home let's rest real quick and yeah get to work all right welcome back i've started the business day just gonna fast forward time a little bit right now i know it's a little bit early before eight but i could still sit here and wait thankfully as soon as it hits eight though boom we are open now the kicker is how well are we going to do business today we're a fresh face in the neighborhood people aren't really familiar with us you know we better also i didn't even think about this What's our pricing? So we are, our market price is 18 bucks. We're charging $18. We're just going to leave it as is currently. That should be okay. We still want to make a profit. I don't believe the AI businesses go below the market price. Unless things have changed since I last played this game, they should also be at $18. You can undercut. Um... It may work, it may not. I really don't know. Right now, we're just gonna let business or customers come into our business and make purchases. Oh, that person said something when they walked in. Unfortunately, it was going too fast for me to see what they said, but they probably made a comment of that there is no radio or music. I will eventually get a radio so they can listen to music and whatnot. Um. I've had the radio off in the car, but uh, I think what I'll do moving forward is 
have the radio going because it is copyright free music so yeah that's what they said it's eerily quiet or awkwardly quiet inside here which it is all you hear is the sound of the ac unit it sounds like so it is what it is but uh yeah let's what we're gonna do right now we're gonna s skip time and see how much we sell here All right, so we sold a little bit. Well, we were at like what 196 when I hit skip time. Not too bad. Still have 168 remaining on here. Now we can go to Bizman. And I believe No, it doesn't show it yet. Interesting. Suppose we have to wait a day then. Um, it will give us the information in, in the insight tab about our customers over time, etc. So I guess we just have to wait for the next day. What I'm going to do real quick though, is manage the storage, grab the cheap gifts, just restock. We're good on paper bags. I mean, we, we had 25 customers, so, which isn't too bad, by the way, it really isn't too bad for, for starting out. We're going to place this right there on the ground and we're just going to go right home. Oopsie. There we go. Well, let's turn that down a little bit. I did turn on the radio, by the way. <laughs> turn down just a little bit more. I definitely don't need the music just drowning out everything. Thankfully, it is copyright free. So. Oh, I need to make a right right here, I think. Nope. I missed my turn. Oh well. Just do a big U turn, I guess. Yeah, some of this music's actually pretty decent. And I could just skip if I want to. So. It's pretty generic. There's a couple songs that I actually like. I don't know if they're still in the game or not. I know they've changed the radio around a couple of times, so. It does kind of break the monotony, doesn't it? Just hearing the drone of the car engine. That's why the customers complain that it's awkwardly quiet when they walk into my store. Which, honestly, is pretty fair. I think it'd be kind of weird to walk into a store without any type of music or like a TV going or something. Something to, again, kind of break the monotony of, of the sound of the store. All right, well, let's sleep again. We'll wake up at... Let's do 7.42. And yes, I do know I'm hungry. One thing this game does is it doesn't starve you to death. You could just literally be starving. Not that you should, by the way, because it will affect your mood eventually. And you always want to have the best mood possible so that your businesses do the best because your employees are affected by you. Even if you never see any of your employees in any of your businesses eventually, they will still consider your mood as a factor in how they are doing interesting that it works that way but i also think it's it's honestly kind of smart that they did that because in reality a business owner would affect someone's mood I'm just gonna it's gonna break the law let's do it all right let's get to work now you'll probably notice here see the little dark blotches this place needs to be clean oh I just rem yeah there you go there we go now we have this Biz man showing us information so already after one day 73% uh, for our interior score 
96% for cleanliness. That will go down. Pricing, 93%. Customer service, 51%. I don't believe you as, a, as the player, your customer service can ever exceed 50%. I don't know why it says 51, which is strange, but I, I, I think that it's just always going to be a base of 50%. It can't go any lower. It can't go any higher. Your employees, however, most certainly can go lower or higher. Now, it looks like we had five customers per hour. I don't know. This is kind of reading a little weird. I don't know what zero, one, two, three, four, five, minus one means. That doesn't seem right. I don't remember it saying minus one before. Hmm. By the way, we're getting some kind of insight. We know we're getting customers, so let's get on the cash register. Let's start working. We got four minutes till open. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to clean the store, so it's just going to be dirty. I think that's part of the objectives. So uh, let's fast forward time a little bit. We'll watch a few customers come in and see what happens. It's kind of unfortunate while you're stuck in this position, like you can't zoom around in the room. The guys walking around in here coughing. Rude. Yeah, it'd, it'd be nice to be able to zoom around, especially in the giant stores. You eventually have a, the ability to build some very massive storefronts. And, uh, I guess not storefront, but stores themselves. And, uh, it'll be very difficult to see beyond this point if you ever work one of the cash registers, if you so desire. Again, you really won't need to when you have employees, but it'd still be nice to just have, like, a stationary position and be able to move the camera around if you really want to. All right, we saw a cu couple customers, nothing major. It's literally going to be like this the entire time. We're just going to skip time again for now. The gameplay may seem a little slow at first. Trust me, it definitely gets gets more busy. The, the more you do, the more you'll get. It, it just it, it snowballs. All right, let's get back home. Gonna do an illegal Yui. Look at that. Got my own little front front of building parking. Oh yeah, let's eat. How much food do I have? I have none. Alright, well, now we have to go get some food. Luckily near us is a supermarket. There it is. I always forget. Let's just buy ten. Eighty dollars. At least that's accurate. Buy ten things, spend eighty dollars. You know, I I like I mentioned earlier. I live in a small town, but man, the food price is here insane. I don't know about anyone else. I'm sure it is everywhere else, to be honest, but I mean, I just the other day, I picked up just something simple for dinner and a couple other items. I mean, we're talking literally five items, and I walked out the door spending around $60, and oof. Man, oh man. Really, really getting you these days. All right, let's wake up at 7.45. We're just going to sleep our days away. Not too bad on the profit, $181. That's including the cost of your, your see, 792 147 All right. Well, look at you hustling around and stacking cash already. I tell you, your dad would have been so proud. I think it's time for your first hire. And don't forget to take that course at the business administration school so you know what you're doing. All right? All right. Well, guys, I think this is a good stopping point. We got plenty of work to do here. Um, 
our next steps are going to be, you know, as it mentions here, doing the business management course so we can start hiring employees, setting schedules, you know, getting things rolling with our businesses. Once we start getting employees done, we can start moving on to opening other businesses. Um, kind of just ba basically making your, your, your empire. Um, but yeah, if you guys like what you see, you know, give a like subscribe, comment, let me know how I'm doing. What do you want to see? What businesses do you want to open? Let me know guys in the comments. I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Take care now. Bye-bye.